Video 5 is the first roll in the tool picker. Now we're going to talk about the tool picker and we're going to right click on the edge, tear it off. That's just like the menu bar and if you hold down your Alt key and grip it, you can rotate it. I can move it off onto my second monitor or back on. I can reset the scale and I can set the scale to whatever I want. Now if I reset the scale and rotation and if you will look at these pods you'll see what they do when I right click and I say stick it to the default edge. All of these move out of the way. That is so cool. Now another thing you can collapse it and then it becomes a pod or you can click it and it'll come back up. Now I want to go into edit into ArtRage Preferences. I'm going to go into Cursors and set my cursor to Tool and click OK so that you can see what tool I'm working with. Now under Settings, if you click it, it'll come up. If you right click on the title bar, you can do all of the scaling that you want. You can move it all the way around into wherever you want it. And if you hold down your control key, you can zoom it or zoom it back down. I happen to like to right click and change it that way. Now it also comes with 14 presets. So if we click on this, it has an oil brush or the round. Now when you have all of these presets, try them out, have fun with them, just make a stroke and have fun. You can set the pressure to whatever you want. For instance, let's say we want this up to 70 and the thinner up to 70 and the loading to about 70. Let's do a stroke here first. I can go over here to the menu. I can add a preset group. I can give it a name. Give it mine. I can click OK. This automatically changes. Next I can hit New Preset. And let's say I want to call this Oil. 70 and if I click on this I can either use the default preview image which was of this brush I can load a preview image or I can sample the preview image if I click on this one this icon comes up and I can bring it down and then click the check mark and click OK. I then have a picture of what my oil brush looks like. And if I click on this, you'll now see that there are three groups. And I have oil 70. And this grip right here can be brought back up and made shorter or longer. If I go back into the oil brush so that I can see them all. Over here we have instant dry and that means if I have it checked that my paint will instantly dry. I can have it as an auto clean. Let's move this up a little bit. If I uncheck it, a little glass comes up and I can dip my brush in as I please. I can either have a square head or a round head and I can also reset. Now we'll, next is the watercolor brush. Again, it has a lot of brushes or presets. I'm going to clear my canvas. And you want to see them all, just bring the grip down and you've got it. Again, you can make the presets just like I showed you for the oil brush. Say you get one 
you've changed a bunch of pressures and color bleed and thinners, then just make a group and make a preset or even put it on this. You don't necessarily have to make a group. Now let's go into delicate on dry. Let's just go into the watercolor. Dry on wet. And let's do just water. I love this part. That's so cool. They've done such a good job with this brush. Let's do a little bit of paint tube so I can show you the palette knife. Now these are the types. You've got your flat, your edge, your soft, your blur, or your wet blender. And if you go through, click on it, you can see what they do. This will blur it. And this will just smooch it all around very, very nicely. Now go through and try out all the different knives. You're going to be totally impressed. Now I'm going to clear my canvas. The next up is the airbrush tool. And it'll have the big and subtle, the slow flow, the slow flow tinter, and the tendrils. And of course, like all the other tools, you can change what, however you want it. You've got the big and subtle. You can barely see it. The slow flow. The slow flow tinter. And the tendrils. Now this is my absolute favorite as far as the new tools, mainly because when I tried to do anything that looked kind of pretty, it didn't. So if I go into the round and smooth, and let's say I put it up a little bit, and I can move the smoothing either down or up, but if I go to do my initials, they look good. I now can put decent looking initials on my paintings. You're going to find that these are all wonderful but if you go to the writing chisel and let's move this up so you can see it a little better and let's put some smoothing and clear the canvas. Let's do an initial or a letter. Now you see how jagged that is? Isn't that perfect? Calligraphers should really love this program. So have fun. Do your presets that you like. And in the next video, we're going to talk about the second row.